I'm gonna do what I used to do with old multiple choices when I had no freaking clue. Previous answers have all been C and D, so I'm gonna choose between A and B. I'm gonna go with B, because why not? <laughs> Today we're going to try Year 12 Biology. <laughs> Don't know why I did that. So I did Biology up until Year 11. So I didn't do Biology in Year 12. I am not at all confident about this. I actually never studied Biology, but I really, really, really wanted to. I did Biology in Year 12, but I definitely wasn't very good at Biology. It was a lot of rote learning and I feel like I just didn't retain any information. I feel like Mariella and I are quite similar in our skills, but Sohan is a complete, I have no idea. I feel like she could just wipe the floor with all of us. I really don't know if they're good at Biology or not. Like I make memes with these guys. Like we don't talk about the powerhouse of the cell or anything. Anything, so I really don't know. I think I'm most worried about Sohan. I think she's gonna be my main competition for today. Wait a minute, isn't Sohan's mother like a teacher? I think she is the one to look out for. So my mom is a teacher, but guys, she teaches like kindergarten. Like she's not out here teaching year 12 biology. So I definitely don't have an advantage at all. Which of the following is an example of a non-infectious disease? A, polio caused by a virus. B, cholera caused by a bacterium. C, wheat rust caused by a fungus. Or D, haemophilia caused by a gene mutation. Okay, first thoughts. I have no idea. Let's just think this through guys. So virus, we know that's infectious, we know. We all know a virus is infectious. I think it's haemophilia because if it's a gene mutation, that doesn't make it infectious. Oh, I can't believe it's the first question and I already have no idea. I believe D because it is something that is passed on through genes and isn't through, you know, contact with another human being. So I'm going to lock in D. Let's lock in D. I'm going to lock in D. I'm going to lock in D, Eddie. Yay, I got it right! <gasps> oh my god, I'm right! If I get every single one wrong from here on out, at least I have that one. <laughs> How does the cochlear implant assist people with severe hearing loss? A, it amplifies sound. B, it stimulates the eardrum. C, it stimulates the auditory nerve. D, it amplifies vibrations in the cochlea. So it's not A, I know that much, because if someone's deaf and you're implementing sound, um, amplifying sound, it's not going to make them suddenly hear more. It's like, just like yelling at them. It stimulates the eardrum. I don't know if that would actually help with hearing. I'm very annoyed that I'm not able to recall the information right now because I feel like I should know this. I think it's D, it amplifies vibrations in the cochlea. I mean, maybe since it's called a cochlear implant, it would amplify vibrations in the cochlea? I feel like that sounds right, so I'm just gonna lock in D. I'm going to go with D. I feel like it could be A or D. I'm gonna go with D. Oh no, I got it wrong. Oh. Ah. Oh, what? Oh my God, I got one wrong, oh no. The following DNA base sequence is used to code for a sequence of four amino acids. C, G, C, A, T, C, A, T, G, C, T, A. Which of the following correctly represents the anticodons, anti-sodon, whatever. Anticodons on the transfer RNA during synthesis of this string of amino acids. Anticodons. I have no freaking clue. Apologies to Year 12 students who have to memorize this stuff. So, like, straight up, I have no idea what any of that is. I don't know what this means. No, nothing about DNA besides, like, the basic stuff and also what I've learned from Jurassic Park. I'm just gonna have to guess and I'm gonna just go with B because it's never A. The answer is never A because it's the first one, so I'm just gonna go with B. I feel like I'm just gonna have to go for a guess because I really have no idea. I'm just gonna go for A. I'm not gonna be able to use reason here. It's gonna be a guess, so I'm gonna go with A. 
I'm gonna go with B, because why not? Yes. Wow, so that means I got it right. That's wonderful. Why do some ectotherms bask in the sun? A, to absorb vitamin D. B, to increase their activity. C, to decrease their metabolic rate. D, to constrict blood vessels close to the skin. First of all, I don't know what ectotherms are. For some reason, I'm thinking of like these little like mollusk worm prehistoric type things. Am I close? To increase their activity, but they're stationary if they're basking. At least that's my understanding of what it means to bask in the sun. Year 12 brain, please come back to me. I was so smart then. You know, if, it, if it's a plant, it's gonna be A. If it's an animal, it's gonna be B. But I don't even know what ectotherms are, so we're gonna go for a guess. I'm gonna go with A. Okay, maybe it's like the obvious answer. Let's lock in A. And I'm gonna go for A. It seems like the obvious answer, so maybe it's not it, but I'm going to go with A anyway. Oh no, it was B again. The one that I said wasn't true. And I totally wrote off B. Oh no, I got it wrong. Didn't I really immediately dismiss that one? Why do I always do this? Which of the following describes the daughter cells produced as a result of mitosis? A, two genetically different cells. B, two genetically identical cells. C, four genetically different cells. D, four genetically identical cells. So mitosis, that's the process where the cell splits, right? So that means there would be two in the beginning, right? So that, if they did mitosis, that means four. Oh my god, but wait, is mitosis the cell thing or is mitosis something else? Oh my god, I don't know. Twins are like genetically the same, like, cause they come from the same cell. So I'm going with either B or D at the moment. Okay, I'm just gonna go with four genetically identical cells. Cause I feel like that would be the daughter. I'm going to go with B. Okay, I'm just gonna go for D. I'm just gonna jump in there. I think it's B. I'm not gonna overthink it. Please be D, please be D, please be D. Oh! <gasps> Yay! <laughs> oh! No! Guys, I'm not gonna get into my uni course. My life is over. Just joking, the HSC means nothing. How do helper T cells assist in raising a specific immune response to a pathogen? A. They mass produce specific antibodies. B, they stimulate the cloning of specific T cells. C, they are cloned and differentiate to become specific cytotoxic T cells. They produce cytokines that stimulate the cloning of specific, I can't even, phycocytes. All right, let's think about this logically. Pathogen, bad. Helper T -Cs. T cells, good. I don't know, for some reason I'm leaning to A already. But let, let's let's sink it through. I'm gonna get rid of B because I feel like saying just specific T cells is too easy of an answer because it's in the question. Stimulate the cloning of specific yeah, I'm just writing that off because I can't, I don't even know. I've actually got no bloody clue. And at this point in the exam, I'd probably be stressing out because I'm running out of time. So I'm just gonna make a real quick decision and go with B. It sounds too obvious, but sometimes it's the obvious answer. I'm going to go with B. So let's just go C. Let's just go with C. Cause my name's Claire and it starts with a C. Oh, B. Damn. Oh my God. <laughs> B, oh no, the one that I was like, that's definitely wrong. <laughs> oh, I redeemed myself in the end. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so excited to tell my parents like over a decade after having taken the HSC that I did all right. <laughs>